You know what? I think it's time. I just gotta admit it. I gotta get it out there. I like Minecraft, okay? I like Minecraft. It's a fun, sandboxy, survival, crafty video game, and I enjoyed it for what it was. I even played some of the Minecraft-like clones with Don't Starve and even Don't Starve Together. Even went so far as to try out Terraria, and they were okay. But even the original Minecraft got stale after a while. You're just sort of floating endlessly with no purpose. Sure, you can do anything you want in this world, but sometimes you need a little, need a little restriction. And finally, a game has come out that took the ideas and basic concepts of Minecraft and nailed it and made what I think is an amazing game. And that is Dragon Quest Builders. And I love it so much that I figured I need to stand up and talk about it. Yes, Dragon Quest Builders gives you that open world feeling, but it has restrictions, okay? It's limited. But just because it's not an infinite world doesn't mean it can't be infinitely fun. Well, maybe not infinitely, but very fun. Very fun it is. Dragon Quest Builders takes place in Alephgard from the first Dragon Quest game, or Dragon Warrior for you NES boys and girls out there. But in this version of the world, the hero accepted the Dragon Lord's offer to rule alongside him, plunging Alephgard into darkness. And it's up to you as the builder to reconstruct towns and fortify them against the Dragon Lord's minions. And all your classic Dragon Warrior questy things are here. And slimes. Yes, lots and lots of slimes. Now for starters, just look at this game. It looks like it should be on the Wii U. It's super vibrant and colorful and just mmm, mmm, it looks good. For a world that is overtaken by darkness, it's pretty bright. And just like with that familiar Dragon Quest style, here comes the music. It's exactly what you'd expect. In fact, I would say the music sounds almost exactly like some of the music from Dragon Quest Heroes, and that's fine. That's good, not a bad thing. Now, if it isn't obvious already, you are not the hero of Alephgard. You are the legendary builder. See, in this world, when the Dragon Lord took over, people forgot how to create things and build them. The story doesn't take itself too seriously, but it still works and actually has a lot of drama and feeling and emotion intertwined throughout it. So that's pretty impressive for a story that breaks the fourth wall a lot and says, hey, you're not the hero. Remember, you're just the builder. You're just building this place back up. You're not, you're not the hero. You're not going to be going and fighting the Dragon Lord, okay? <laughs> Spoiler, you will be. <laughs> but because you aren't the hero, again, they keep putting that in your brain. You are not a hero. Stop acting like a hero. That means you're not going to get experience points for killing things. No. You get items that they may drop, which you can use for crafting, but you're not going to get any experience points. You won't be leveling up your stats. The only way to increase your strength, defense, is through equipment that you craft and build. You're the builder. See, it's all, it's all just meshing together now, right? Though you can permanently increase your hit points by using Seeds of Life, which you get for accomplishing various quests, and you're going to need the extra HP. Now, I pre-ordered the game, and when it arrived on that first day, I popped it in the PS4, and I was a little nervous, because it has a third-person perspective, as opposed to Minecraft's first-person perspective, which works really well for building, so I was worried how the building mechanics were going to play out. Surprisingly, with a little practice, it's pretty good. Clearly, a video game with builders in the title should get the building mechanics pretty spot on, wouldn't you think? And even though it is in third person, the control setup lends itself well to quickly putting up walls and sorting out the perimeters of rooms. However, small item placement can get kind of tricky when dealing with the camera. See, aside from rotation and the occasional snap zoom in and out, you don't have much control at all, which can lead to the oddly placed block now and then. If you plan on building a multi-level town, which I started doing as I got more advanced, 
the camera will really show how finicky it is. There is that quick camera reset that sort of snap zooms to bring your character into view, but you really need a wide angle to build and navigate properly. So what am I saying here? The building works really well, but there is a significant flaw in the way you control the camera. I got used to it, but I feel like I shouldn't have had to take in that much time to get used to it. You know what I'm saying? Shouldn't it shouldn't take it that long. I don't understand why they couldn't just assign two buttons for zooming in and out. Not just a snap in or out. A nice smooth, specific, and precise zoom so I can see exactly what I'm constructing. And this is, yep, just constructing invisible spheres. You don't do that in the game. Though it is kind of funny when unintentionally you zoom in and guys is just staring at you. Now one of the things that I really think Dragon Quest Builders does better than Minecraft is, <laughs> aside from it looking graphically much more pleasing to the eye and like actual things, is the actual things you can build aren't just blocky. Yes, you can build furniture like chairs to sit on, thrones, banners to put on the walls. You're not set with some very specific paintings. Now I understand there are mods to affect Minecraft and that community is amazing. But I'm talking about just base game. You don't really have as many options. Dragon Quest Builders has more restrictions overall with building, but I like the additional objects that I can create. Okay? I've got multiple light sources. I'm not just running around with torches and putting them on the walls. I can make braziers. I know. Brazers, right? Brazer, braziers. <laughs> Always been a tricky word for me. But you've got sconces and you can make candelabras. A lot of options. Another great thing about Dragon Quest Builders is the addition of residents that can move in to your sort of base town area that you're building. And those residents can help you in battle, and they can also be affected by the rooms that you build within your base. So you can get these blueprints that show you specific ways to build rooms and placing certain objects in them to create various effects, like the HP of your residents will be increased by 20%. Or if you build a sort of food preparation area, residents will come in, they'll cook food, and they'll place it in a chest, which you can use to, you know, not starve. Because yes, you have to keep track of your hunger in this game. So just eat some mushrooms, and then eat some more mushrooms, and you'll be just fine. Eat those fried mushrooms. Heck, you can even build bathhouses and strip down with your friends. I really enjoyed the later chapters of the game where you could go out with some of your residents as party members and they would help you battle and they would follow you around. Sometimes they would get stuck. They're not super smart when it comes to caves and, and cliffs. They struggle, but they do all right. I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't do that more often. I don't think it was until the third chapter that you were actually able to ask people to go out on missions with you. And in the fourth chapter, it rarely happened to where you could take someone out with you. Sometimes you would save someone and they would fight with you until you got back to base. But then that was it. They were like, no thanks. I'm not going back out there. You rescued me from out there and out there's a bad place. I'm not going back out there. So that's something I would like to have seen more. The ability to take your residents out in a party and battle. Because combat can get tricky. Here we go. Got another little complaint. Just a little teensy weensy. But it's because I love the game that I'm, I'm just talking about the things that I see wrong with it because of how much I love it. Let's get to it. Things do fall apart a little bit in the combat. For one, the bounce back from getting hit or just touching enemies is redonkulous, ridiculous redonkulous. A lot of times I'm getting knocked all over the place and I can't get my footing and before you know it, I'm dead. Now I will admit, again, just like with the building mechanics, you can learn the rhythm of combat to avoid getting hit as you learn how enemies plan their attacks. But when multiple enemies show up and start ganging up on you, it just, it just feels like a mess. A mess. A big, fat mess. And even when you have your residents in your party and they're all ganging up on the monsters with you, it's easy to get lost in the crowd. I'm just sitting there in the middle of the crowd swinging my sword wildly and I don't even see myself. I'm just, am I hitting? Am I hitting them? I'm, I'm not hitting them. I'm not. So even though they occasionally get in my 
freaking way. I do love the personalities of each character in the game. They're just so cute. And you even get to see the princess. Ooh, the, pr mm, ooh, the princess. Hello, princess. You wanna, you wanna go out and battle with me in the, in the world? You wanna, no? Oh, that's right. Can't add you as a party member. Lame. So what it really all just comes down to is they took the concept of Minecraft with the crafting and the building, but they made a game out of it because sometimes Minecraft doesn't feel like a game. It just feels like an experience that's just never ending. I mean, you can play it in a way that's ending, but I mean, come on, this is, this is why it's called a sandbox. This is why it's called a sandbox. So having this four chapter story that I can go through, experience, and actually complete and feel like I have finished something is awesome. And it's, it's kind of short, depending on how much exploration you do and how much you just want to speed run through and finish. But the experience is great nonetheless. It's plenty of experience. I, I it kind of left me wanting more. Kind of left me wanting more. So if you want to get a sequel going, go ahead and give me that sequel, because I will play DQB2, Dragon Quest Builders 2. I'll play it. But if those four chapters of story and eventually taking down the Dragon Lord, excuse me for the spoilers. Come on, you knew you, knew you were gonna fight the Dragon Lord. It's Dragon Quest, okay? It's a quest of dragonness. But when you're done with those chapters, you can play in a free play mode, which is much more similar to the Minecraft you're used to. Still a little restrictive, but all of the recipes and buildings and items and materials and resources and enemies that you've gone through in the story are all here as you unlock them. And you actually have more things that you can craft and build in the Terra Incognita free play mode than you would in the normal chapter modes. Cause you know, again, you have specific things you need to build to complete the quest. Free play, it's all there for you. And it kind of has a neat way of letting people share their creations with you instead of having to join their complete world. You can set up these little boxed in areas where you can build a creation and then send that out and people can randomly take a look at your creation and it'll load into their free play world. Pretty neat idea. Pretty neat idea. And it keeps it safe so it doesn't get all beat up like it would in a Minecraft server. Ew. Rude. Rude in Minecraft servers. And there's also extra challenges in that free play mode that you can enjoy. So there's a lot of replay value here in Dragon Quest Builders, but it has a definite end if you want it to. Minecraft, it kind of does, but not like Dragon Quest Builders. So I enjoy Dragon Quest Builders much more than Minecraft. In fact, I 100%ed, 100%ed this game. I don't do that much with modern games. I got the plat, got the platinum trophy. I, <laughs> I don't often do that. So if you like Dragon Quest, if you like Minecraft, if you like building things and make, making things, happen. If you're a fan of Makery, <laughs> check out Dragon Quest Builders. It gets my highest recommendation, obviously. I mean, it was good enough to get me off the couch, get my butt off the couch, stand up, and tell you guys about it. Now, I just want a sequel. I want more. I want more. I want to see that legendary builder in Dragon Quest Builders 2. <laughs> so what'd you think? What'd you think? Did you like did you like that video? Was that all right for you? Yeah. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed my little take on modern games, I would like to share more about my gaming experiences, not just the retro stuff. Obviously, I'm playing more than just retro games. Am I right? So let me know in the comments if you want to see more, and I'll talk about more modern games. And if you don't, all right then. And if you haven't already, subscribe if you don't hate my face, my face bits. And hopefully you'll enjoy some more videos in the future. Okay. Remember, stay digitally distracted. Okay? Let's... Ooh. <laughs>